another grandpa who can't seem to keep his hands to himself. On January 20th, 2021, a six-year-old came forward and said that her step-grandfather touched her inappropriately. The victim's mother in this case told police that she saw the grandfather acting suspiciously with another child, playing house with another child in a way that made her feel uncomfortable. So she separated both girls from the grandfather, Michael Landon Stewart, and questioned them about what was going on and if they had been touched inappropriately. It does seem like a little bit of a jump to just go to asking if someone has been touched inappropriately. But what you don't know is that in 2003, in Oklahoma, Michael Landon Stewart was charged with lewd molestation after he allegedly molested a 14-year-old babysitter in his home. Now, Michael Stewart was convicted of that charge, and so he was already having to register as a sex offender. And I'm definitely not going to play the blame game. I don't know what the situation was. I don't know the actual relationship or closeness of how Michael Stewart was to these children or why they were around his house. On January 20th, 2021, a Crimes Against Children forensic interview was conducted with the victim in this case. Remember, she's six years old. And she said that while she was visiting her step-grandfather, whose name was Michael Stewart, at his home in Okalona, that's in Clark County, that Michael showed her nude people in a video. And she said that the nude people were rubbing on each other while sitting on a couch. And he had her watch this video and then wanted to act it out. The victim and Michael Stewart were in a camper and he showed her these videos of, you know, adults that didn't have their clothes on. He did things like violate the victim digitally and orally. The victim also told the interviewer that while Michael still had his pants on, he pulled his private part out of the front part of his pants. Now, you and I know what all of these things mean, you know, naked people on a video that are touching each other, but you have to understand this is coming from a six-year-old. She told the interviewer that Michael put his mouth on her private part and put his private part on her private part. And guys, it is so important. I think now is the perfect time to say it. It is important to teach your children the proper names for their private parts. Vagina is not a bad word. Penis is not a bad word. And in these cases, it would be so much clearer if they knew what the parts were actually called. Because in so many of these cases, investigators have to take time to figure out what body parts the children are talking about because they're not using anatomically correct words, right? And I think that it's just super important to teach your children Right from the start, maybe you don't have to use these words in everyday language, but it's important to know what the parts are. No shame to the mother in this case or any other case, but I think as you get older and time goes on, we learn better and maybe better is teaching children the proper names. So in this case, Michael Stewart was arrested and charged with one count of rape. Michael Landon Stewart did not take a plea deal. Instead, he decided to have a jury trial. And on the first day of the trial, before trial got started, the state decided to charge Michael Landon Stewart as a habitual offender. Now, at trial in November 2022, the victim did testify. She testified to everything that I just told you. She testified that there were times when she spent the night with her step-grandpa and he would take her from where she was sleeping after she fell asleep and take her to the couch in the living room and have her watch these adult videos. Now, Michael Stewart fought really hard to keep his prior criminal history out of court. He didn't want it being mentioned that he was already a sex offender, that he had already been charged with lewd molestation, because he said that the charges were so dissimilar because of the ages and the claims from the victims that they shouldn't be mentioned. So like, what is your opinion about that, about a sex offender going after a six-year-old and also a 14-year-old? He also didn't want his adult film-watching 
history to come up into court because there were allegedly terms that he had searched that would lead investigators to believe that he also watched child sex abuse videos, right? But there were no child sex abuse videos found on his device. There were only adult videos found. But the child, the victim in this case, didn't claim that she was forced to watch child videos. She claimed that she was forced to watch adult videos. And I don't really know if there's a way to govern this. I mean, I do think that sex offenders today, unfortunately, do need to have access to the internet because everything in the world is on the internet. You fill out applications online. You do so many things online. But with that, how would you stop a sex offender from doing things like watching adult videos, which I feel like is kind of a problem. You already have a problem with, you know, sex. You're thinking, do you really need to have access to adult videos too? But honestly, that's neither here nor there because Michael Landon Stewart was convicted of that one count of grape and he was sentenced to 720 months in the Arkansas Department of Corrections, which comes out to 60 years. And Michael Stewart is not as young as I am. You know, he was born in 1969. He will not be eligible for parole until 2065, which means he will be 96 years old. Could he live that long? Sure. What are the chances? Not high. 24, that appeal was denied. He didn't file an appeal saying like, I didn't do this crime. I'm innocent. He filed an appeal that some of the things that were allowed in court, like the testimony of his past conviction, shouldn't have been allowed in. So do with that information what you will.